Hi everyone, it's time for another Ableton Live tutorial. This is tutorial number eight. Hook up your phone with Touch OSC. Well, all right. So first you have to get Touch OSC on your phone. This is my favorite application for hooking an iPhone up to a Macintosh, but it also works with Androids and PCs. So let's just go ahead and figure out where we're going to get it. So it's available from the App Store and it's made by a company called Hexler and it gives you all these fantastic interfaces that you can use with your uh, with Ableton Live or any other DAW right here. Now you'll also notice right here it says also for Android. I already clicked on that just so you know. There it is, and you can go to Google Play or Amazon and get that. And then if you do go to the Apple Store, that's what it looks like. And you can see all the screenshots of various things and all its great ratings and stuff. But uh, let's just figure out how to get it hooked up and go right for it. Now, today I'm going to do it the simplest way. It is possible to use OSC, which means Open Sound Control, on your Mac, but we don't need to. Touch OSC can also use MIDI, and we're going to connect that to Ableton Live. So, go to the Apple Store or the, Android, the Google Play and download this. It costs $4.99. I know, I know. And put it on your phone. You'll never regret it. Then, Make sure that your phone and your computer are on the same Wi-Fi network. Now, if you happen to have your computer plugged into uh, Ethernet or something like that, or you're at an institution, or you don't want people screwing around, just create your own network. And uh, I'm going to call it uh, Johnny One, and I'm going to put it on channel 5. I don't even know why just because nobody ever uses Channel 5. So now I'm going to make a network called Johnny1, and I'm creating it. And while it does that, I'm going to try to make my phone so that you can see it. There it is. And what we're going to do, you can see I've downloaded OSC right here. Um, but before we do that, let's um, uh, go to your settings, however you want to get there. I happen to have my settings right there. And you see I'm, I'm logged into the Wi-Fi network. I'm going to log into Johnny1. Join anyway. Heck, I made that network. How dangerous could it be? All right. Now we'll go back, oh my goodness, all the way to OSC, there it is, and I'm going to open it. Now, when you're in OSC, um, you'll see under the connections that it has an OSC connection, it's disabled. Touch OSC bridge is disabled. It might not be on your, on your phone, but on mine, now I have core MIDI in and out. There they are. And nothing is available. Well, let's hold that thought for a moment and go back to our computer. Um, if you go to your Finder and go to Applications, scroll down to Utilities, and then open your Audio MIDI setup. Looks like that. Click, click. Um, this might not come up for you immediately. Um, if it doesn't, I'm just going to close it so I can open it for you again. Go up to Window and say Show MIDI Studio. And there it is. Now, first thing, you want to make sure that your IAC driver is running. So click it open and make sure that this says Devices Online. Look at that. There it is. And you can see this is highlighted when this is highlighted. Great. If you feel like adding a couple extra buses, 
Now's the time to do it. It's easy to do, but not all that exciting. Okay, close that. The important thing here is that the important thing is the network here. So let's double click that open. And um, hopefully your uh, computer has already found your phone. Mine seems to already be aware of it. So up here in this top window is where you have your various sessions and you just have to make one active. Uh, this is where I am right now. So I'm just going to make this active. And once I have a session active, I can choose who to add to that section. And uh, Blanche is my white phone. Radio Gigamerts is my streaming radio server. Don't ask. So anyway, so I'm going to click on Blanche and then you can see connect lights right up. And I'm going to connect. And there's Blanche right there. And you'll notice on the telephone that now we suddenly have network one, network session one on both of those. So that means that Touch OSC is now connected by way of MIDI to the network session. Is that fabulous or what? So easy. So now we're back here. And let's. Um, down here we have the keyboard layout. Let's uh, try something simple like keys. And then we can say done. And oh, don't they look nice? Okay, so now that we have that working, let's go right on over to Ableton Live. And in Ableton Live, um, Let's just keep uh, clicking on this here. You can see up here in the corner that it already has incoming MIDI. But let's just check out our MIDI pathways here. Hit Command comma to open up the preference window. And then find your network session down here. And what you'll want to do is make sure that it's on. I've been playing with it already, I'll confess. On, this is the track. So that's going to be on for things that are notes. It'll accept MIDI, and it'll also send MIDI back on the network if you want to. Um, some of these things have sort of feedback on them, so that's fine. We'll click this on just in case it wants to. If we have a problem, we'll turn it back off. Then, notice, here we are again, network, and we're going to turn on the remote. And that's for things that are controlling stuff. And we're also going to want to turn the feedback on that. And the feedback is usually important, like if you hit a light up button and it has to stay lit, this will tell it to do that. So that's really it. These are now connected to uh, Ableton. And let's just uh, zoom, or we'll just close this. And we'll uh, come over here and look at uh, channel one and see if our MIDI is coming to it, and we can see right there that it is. So this is all very exciting. Now, um, in order to make sound in here, of course, we're going to have to put an instrument in it. So I'm going to choose this Brassicana lead right here and drop that right in there. And now, when we play our thing, Oh, sorry. Never forget. Didn't arm it. But I now it's here. Sweet. So nice. So now we can um, play remotely if we wish on our keyboard and um, though I believe the, the uh, leads are never monophonic they're always uh, uh, excuse me they're always monophonic not polyphonic so they, they tend to jump around and hit one note and jumps up to the next so it jumps back and forth but that's the beauty of leads it kind of gives it a fluttering quality all its own. 
So great, now we can play something. And um, well, uh, why not let's do, um, we just hit the record here. And I'm just gonna keep this super simple here uh, for reasons that I can't tell you right now. Oh, it's recorded, ha ha ha. Okay, and we'll stop that. And now uh, let's just check and make sure we actually recorded something. Fantastic. So now um, we can bring this over here and if you control click on this you can make this um, uh, measure one beat one so I'm going to control click on it set 1.11 here I think the last one is for something called ticks but I'm not sure ticks are sort of a subdivision of notes and then I'll move the loop thing up there too and then let's uh, Go on over here and get this to um, a point where it'll sound good. Five. It'd be weird if it was this one, one. So we want to make this one. Uh, let's just see how that sounds. Just a second. Where are you five? There we go. Okay. Uh, let's hear it. Oh, you have to make sure this is on the loop, of course. seen that we can use the, use this as a musical controller and now what we want to do is use it to control parameters using the remote um, the remote uh, channel that we had opened in preferences which is also known as sort of like control channel so let's come down here and go back to the instrument and then um, just for fun here, uh, let's add in some uh, audio effects. Uh, how about a frequency shifter? What do we got here? What looks interesting? Stereo vibrato. Okay, we'll try it. And we'll drag that all the way over here. Now we've got some stereo vibrato. Um, you know, just click on that to make it smaller. And then um, what else might we want? Uh, a uh, resonators. Oh, the vocoder is always exciting. Um, Oct plus six mod. Sounds awesome. Let's do it. 
and uh, let's see. Oh, um, you'll notice that as I put these in here, I always put the audio effects to the right-hand side of the instrument, and that's because this channel is MIDI, and then it gets turned into sound by the instrument and comes out as sound. You can also uh, go and get um, a MIDI effect, and uh, let's, let's get a little randomness in there. Um, uh, how about let's force a little jazz on ourselves? So we, but for a MIDI effect, we have to put it to the left of the instrument because what it does is a numerical um, audio effect on the MIDI instructions, right? So now that we've done that, we can um, we can find something that we like. So let's turn this on now and see what all this sounds like. Oh, it's just incredible. Um, these are the power buttons, so maybe we can take these one at a time here. Um, there's our sound. So what's our uh, forced jazz sound like? Um, this is nice. This is a chance, which throws in random notes in there. Throw a pitch shift in here so that we can actually get in some sort of scale that we can work with. Uh, so now you can hear that chance. And if you turn the number of choices up, it starts going all over the place now. So we're going to come back and get frequency there. And what about, uh, I might have to open this one up a little bit here. The oct plus six. So let's hear it. Not a big change there. Yep. Okay, so we picked out a couple things, so let's uh, just go over here to our, uh, our controller. Let's do the let's do the volume of the whole thing so we can just actually shut this silly thing off when we need to. Um, you can see this is all highlit, so let's click on this. You see the corners light up. Now if we slide this back and forth, you can immediately see the numbers in there going back and forth. So that we put on the blue one. Now. Um, Right here, you have a power button for uh, the forced jazz, so let's click on that. 
and then put this blue button there. It's a sign. And then which one did we like in here? It was chance. I'm going to click on chance and slide this one up and down. And you see, as soon as I do that, um, uh, a number gets assigned to this. Okay? So then um, we don't need to worry about the instrument itself, but we could actually put something on there. Well, let's think about that for a minute. Uh, stereo vibrato is next, so here's the power right there, and now I'm going to hit the next button. Boom. It's a sign, and I believe we like frequency on this. I'm going to click on it, hit this slide here, and it's a sign. I'm going to go over here to Oct plus 6, hit its power button, hit the next one. Um, and it's a sign. And then, uh, what were we going to do on this one? Form on. So I'm going to click on that, slide that one up and down. We have three effects, and we still have a button and a um, and another slide left. Now uh, we can see. Um, Back here on Brzezinski, Brasikana. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Tone, amp, cabinet, compressor, reverb. Let's try the reverb. There we go. Um, so, something that could be operated with a. Well, let's just try. Doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. Um, Let's, uh, let's wait on that last one, um, I guess I counted wrong, and see if we need to throw one in later. So, uh, we're going to okay. Um, so now we can hit uh, Command M, and we've got our thing going there. And you'll notice when we move this, we can make it quiet, and we can make it loud. We can turn off all our effects, or we can turn them back on, and we can modulate them. Let's go for that first one. something to do with this last effect. Um, whoops. <laughs> Just whacked into it kind of like good. Um, let's see. Oh, we have a the presence is always nice. Can't 
control it though. Oh, it's controlled by one of these uh, one of these knobs here. That's it. Amp amount. So we can do that one, and we might be able to do a. Uh, Uh, this would require two buttons, though. Hmm. I guess we'll have to lose one button, I suppose. Um, so what was that? Amp amount? Um, go ahead and assign that last one to this one. What we can do is uh, again say Command M and then click on this and then we'll just run that slider up and down and it should be assigned right to it. And now when we hit Command M again, we've got even more control. So, oops, not on. Oh, that one doesn't matter. Possibly be more fun than that. Oh, I know what that other one should be. It should probably be for the stop button. Here, check it out. Command M. And uh, let's just assign this. Or, yeah, there one. This one. And we'll just put that button. Just for fun. There we go. So now Command M. And we have a way to, once we jam. So, a way to stop it. So that's it. That's my, uh, that's my tutorial for the day. I hope that's uh, a lot of fun for you, and uh, I'll be back with some other applications that we can stick on our iPhone. But in the meantime, have a ball, patch well. Thanks for watching.